Welcome to Fruit Snacks, a weekday podcast that covers big ideas about the Christian worldview in a bite-sized format. Hey everyone, today we are getting to one of the most interesting and different topics in ancient cosmology, and that is the sea. I think you're going to find some of this very fascinating. I know that I did when I was first reading about it. The idea that water surrounded everything above and below is very uh, different, and yet we can see why, based on their perspective, the ancient Israelites would have thought this. So right in Genesis chapter 1, verses 6 through 8, we see the writer describe how God is separating the waters. There are waters above and there are waters below. And in Psalm 148.4 and Isaiah 55.10, we see other descriptions of how there is water above. Now the thinking here is that if rain and snow and precipitation is coming down from above us, well, that means there must be water up there somewhere. And basically we're getting, we're getting leaks from, from whatever is above us. There must be massive amounts of water above us, which God put up there when he separated. And then he created the firmament to basically hold back these waters to keep them from just falling down in this deluge and and killing us all. And so water came from above in the ancient thinking at divine command. Water didn't come down just willy-nilly. There was no conception of a cloud cycle or a water cycle at that at that point in time that the deity controlled whether or not you got rain and therefore whether or not your crops grew and whether or not you could stay alive. And that God could just as well hold it back if he so chose. And we even see this right in scripture with the the story that we know about uh, the famine that came upon the land during the time of Elijah, when he was dealing with the idolatry and the prophets of Baal. And then he went and he prayed and a, a cloud formed and then finally rain came on the land, right? In Jeremiah 51, 16, uh, Amos 9, 6, and Deuteronomy 28, 12, we see these references to this idea that there are heavenly storehouses of water, that God just has reserves of water and snow and really just all weather, lightning, things like that, that they all come down from God at his divine command. In fact, because the firmament was considered solid, the idea that any water could come out of it again, in ancient thinking, must have meant that there were somehow windows or sluices or slits in the firmament which were divinely controlled that could be opened and closed at God's command. And we see an example of this in 2 Kings 7.2 and in 7.19 where the uh, officer is is talking to uh, Elisha and describing how how in the world can rain come and there be crops coming up, even if even if as he says it, if God opened up all the windows in heaven, how would we how would the crops be able to recover that fast? And he's expressing disbelief, but in passing, he's making a reference to a very common idea at the time that there were these sort of windows or sluices in the firmament that could be opened and closed to allow water to come out. In fact. <laughs> I find this just a fascinating idea, but I I read at one point that uh, there's even evidence that some ancients thought of the sky as being blue, not because of the refraction of light and all these other things that we know it to be today, but because the, the blueness of the sky was actually an indication that there was a massive amount of water or this great sea above And the blueness that we're seeing as we look up on a cloudless day is the waters that are being held back. It's just fascinating to consider that that thought in just a very different way of conceiving of of what is up there when you look up. But this is, I think, how the ancients thought. And as we talked about in uh, past episodes, this, this circle of the deep that is described in the Old Testament means that the 
uh, ancient peoples thought that all water was connected in some way to these these cosmic waters that really every river, every lake, every ocean all sort of found its way back to its source, which is the the abyss, the deep, even the waters above. So the Genesis flood demonstrates God's control over the sea because it's as if, and way the way that it's described is that the the uh, the windows of heaven burst open, and the fountains of the deep were were basically allowed to erupt. The idea is that God threw open all of the windows all at once. And in the ancient thinking, that's bad because that's too much, too much of a good thing, and we're going to drown if if God does something like that. And so that's the way that the flood is described if you go back and read about it in Genesis. So I want us to see one other thing as it pertains to this cosmology of the sea in the Bible. And I think this is just really cool is that God constantly, constantly delivers his people by demonstrating his utter control over the cosmic waters and seas. Let me give you some examples. In Exodus, the Red Sea is parted. And there are verses and passages in scripture that refer to when God is parting the Red Sea, that the people are crossing through the deep. Now, the Red Sea, which is probably the Reed Sea, would not have been even close to the deepest ocean around there. And yet, because all water is connected, if they're passing through any water by God's divine Uh, guidance and sovereignty, then they are passing through the deep. God is controlling the deep. When Moses in the wilderness uh, was supposed to speak to the rock, but struck it instead and water poured forth from it so that the people wouldn't uh, die of dehydration. God is providing water miraculously. He is in charge of these storehouses of water and he can bring them forth however he so chooses. And going into the promised land, crossing the Jordan River at flood stage, which would have been impossible at the time, and yet God made it happen. So over and over and over again, God demonstrates that nothing is outside of his control or his purview as creator, that everything is ultimately under his will as the creator, and there's nothing that he hasn't created. And so God is firmly in control of every aspect of creation. And just like the ancients thought, I hope that that thought gives you and I great confidence and just a peace that we can trust God and know that no matter what our circumstances, God is firmly in control.